Good morning. Welcome once again to Sunday School with the New Life Church of Orlando, located at 3311 North Powers Drive in the beautiful city of Orlando, Florida. We're under the dynamic leadership of our pastor and bishop, Derek W. Hutchins. I'm Ruthie Warren. Today is Sunday, September 13, 2020, and our studies will continue in the Christian Life series by Union Gospel Press. Our study is preparation of a nation, and we know that we're talking about Israel here. However, I'd like to interject that when we talk about God's chosen people, we're also talking about those of us who are called by his name. So then, we're looking at Israel by precept and example. We will observe Israel's attitude toward God and, God and the attributes of God toward Israel with the intent to regulate our behavior, our thoughts, and our ways. The central thought of our study continues to be provisions. God is our provider. Last week, we established five foundational truths. Let's rehearse them. One, God is our provider. He makes provisions for us, just as he did Israel. Two, important, God hears us when we murmur and complain. Three, we should praise God in our adversities rather than murmur and complain. Sometimes, it's easy that we praise him when things are going as we would like them to go. Then we can give God all the praise, the glory, and honor that's due his name. But when adversity strikes, we develop spiritual amnesia. Let's be conscious of that. Number four, he responds, watch this, God responds not to our wants entirely or our manipulations, but responds in his own way to our needs according to what's best for us. I said a mouthful then, and I hope you got it. We cannot manipulate God. God acts in his own good pleasure and his own good will according to our needs. Number five, God provided Israel, God proved Israel. If we look again at Exodus 15, 25 through 36, and Exodus 16 and the fourth verse, we'll see that God proved Israel. And guess what? He proves us today. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows where we are in our walk with him, and he takes that under his spiritual reactions. Today we continue our study with Israel as they are journeying. Last week we left them in the wilderness of Zen. So they've had a few quiet days now. We haven't heard from Israel, but listen. Quieted for a while, they sojourned on to the place of Rephidim. Remember, I just said God has already proven them. He knows how they're going to act. He knows what they're going to say. This might be the last stop before Israel reaches Mount Sinai. And we know about Mount Sinai, but we're not going to get ahead of our lesson. They will probably spend a lengthy time at Mount Sinai. Therefore, they need to learn lessons prior to getting there. The same is true of us. We have to go through baby steps to get to giant steps. So let's take a look at our lesson. Our lesson today has three outlines. Outline number one is the test. 
The test is taken from Exodus 17, verses 1 through 3. Let's read it. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. Remember, we leave in this wilderness now. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Ah, subliminal. What do you think is going to happen? God already knows who we are. He knows our acts. So what do you think Israel is going to do now? There is no water. Verse number two. Wherefore the people did chide. Ah, is that what you expected? With Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Why are you putting this on me? Have you not learned? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Verse number three. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, here we go again, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. We do know how to embellish things, don't we? We do know how to point the finger, don't we? We are concerned, Israel, concerned about me, myself, and I. Bring us out here to kill us. Where is your faith? In God. Complaining clouds your senses, causes you not to be rational. Remember, God hears us when we murmur and complain. God sees what we do and hears what we say. Moses' response, why do you blame me? Why do you blame God? In our adversities, do we act like Israel, where is your mirror? Do you point the finger at somebody else? Is it always somebody else's fault? Do you hesitate to worship or you forgot about that? You would think that they have come to know God by now. He's already done several things, right? He's given them food, quail, manna, He's parted the Red Sea. He's delivered them from Egypt. He's given, he made the bitter water sweet. You'd think they would know him by now. God tests the people. God himself knew. He's the one that, that led them to this, to Rephidim. Did the clouds lead them? That was God. By day and the pillar of fire by night, that was God. God is our provider. Not by choice of the people nor Moses. God did it himself. Evidently, they missed the mark. So the test is stamped. Repeat. Did you get that? Life is filled with tests. God knew. He could have led them another way. But no, they needed to pass the test. When we fail the test, we are tested again. Just as in school, tests have purpose. Tests have benefit. Tests shows us what we know. And we have to pass tests to go to the next grade. Do you possess a negative spirit? Israel fail the test of faith. Do they not know? Have we not been through enough to trust God? So now listen. The people test the Lord. They could have stopped sh short of murmuring with Aaron and Moses. But no, what does it say in the third verse? Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? and our children and our cattle with thirst. You're not complaining to Moses and Aaron. This is God who did this. 
He said, I led you by the cloud. I'm the one that, who did it. While it is appropriate for God to test us, it is entirely inappropriate for us to test God. This indicates a spirit of unbelief, as if to say, God, would you do this for me? Won't you do this for me? Why haven't you done this for me? Israel tested God's patience with ingratitude and demands. They did not appreciate what he had done and was, was doing. Listen, once again, we cannot manipulate God. We have to trust him fully and wholeheartedly. Israel didn't do that. Yet they focused on their uncomfortable circumstances, which warped their thinking or reasoning. Consequently, they refused to wait for God to take care of them. Do we often mumble and complain prior to waiting? Have we consulted God? Have we worshiped him and praised him in the midst of our situations? Or do we lack the patience to wait? The problem was not lack of water. Did you hear me? The problem was not lack of water, but lack of faith in God to meet their needs. Let's listen attentively once again. Do we walk by faith? Let's grow up in our faith. We all have room to grow. Again, the problem, and I use Israel, was not lack of water. Our problem, our situation, is not the situation that we're in, but a lack of faith in God to meet our needs. Let's patiently wait on him, trusting and knowing that God is our provider, and he sees us. Outline number two is the response. Exodus 17, four through six. Let's read those verses. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Put a pen right there. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. They're about ready to kill me, God. What do, you think I want, what do you think I should do? And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smoteth the river. Take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. God is our provider. And listen, he's faithful. Even in the midst of our adversities, our trials, uh, he is able. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Because God is our provider because he is. We have everything that we need. Yes, Moses had the right approach. Look at what he did. First thing, he went to God. He consulted the Lord. That's the right thing to do. He exhibited faith that Israel should have had. But God knows the end from the beginning. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will do what? He will direct your path. Moses, leaders, missionaries, evangelists, pastors, listen to this. Even when you become frustrated with your leadership role, Learn to use the power and authority that God has given to you. You know he gave it to you. He gave you your gift and your several abilities. 
one of the major themes in the book of Exodus is that they may know that I am the Lord. And that's what we have to grasp in our spirit, to know that God is the Lord. Moses, use your rod, the rod of God. This rod for Moses symbolizes power, authority, and the presence of God. What has he given to you to symbolize his power and authority? Missionary, evangelists, pastors, saints, what has God given to you that symbolizes his power and authority? I submit to you that we have faith that comes through the word of God. As Christians, we acknowledge the power of prayer, but too often prayer is the last resort. We tend to think we can provide our own needs, but we've already established that God is our provider. He is our ultimate source. Moses was the instrument that God used to provide for Israel, and the elders were his witnesses. Israel must learn these lessons. We must learn these lessons because there, our tests will take us to higher elevations. Our tests will progress as we progress. But if we don't pass the elementary test, we won't get to the more advanced ones. Our last outline is the rebuke, Exodus 17, chapter, verse 7. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord there, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Because of your complaining here, and because you tempted the Lord in questioning his presence among us, Moses set up a memorial there. We hear about Meribah. We don't hear very much about Massa, but we know Meribah, he set up a memorial there for the generations to come that they will know that Israel chided there, that Israel had like a faith there, that Israel did not pass the test there. Look in the mirror. Are we similar to Israel? Don't condemn Israel until you take a look at yourself. God knows those of us who are his. He knows the end from the beginning. Do we know ourselves? Our tests show us who we are. God proves us through our tests. Life is filled with tests. So think it not strange concerning the fiery dots, the tests that come. When we don't pass the test, we don't move to the next grade. Did you hear me? When we don't pass the test, we have to repeat. Old time revivalist, some of you may re remember him, R.W. Shambach preached a message Tempted, tested, and tried. Saints of God, we are tempted, not by God, tested and tried. How old in Christ do you want to be yet in the first grade, in the second grade or the third grade? 1 Corinthians 3 and 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto, you are not able to digest it. Let's grow up in Christ in all things. Ephesians 4 and 15, the prayer was, my desire is that you grow up into him in all things. Saints, let's grow up. Let's pass the test. You know, sometimes when you're taking a test, if you just think on the question instead of spontaneously answering, oh, I know that, and you answer. But when you stop and think about it, stop and think about it. 
praise in the midst of adversities will put a hinder to mummering and complaining. Oh, come, let's praise him in the midst of it all. And let's see, let's prove who we are in Christ. God bless you. That's your challenge for today. That's your challenge for the week is be slow to complain and murmur and let's pass the test that we can move on to the next grade in Christ. God bless you. We'll see you next week.